Hey everyone, this is Rob with Codecademy. I'm a software developer based out of Seattle, Washington. In this video, we're going to walk through the C-sharp project, the object of your affection. So far, we've learned the basics of working with objects in C-sharp. To complete this project, you'll need to be familiar with how to define a class, how to define a constructor, how to instantiate an object using the new keyword, and how to define the actions a class can take with methods. Okay, let's get started. In this project, your friend is building a matchmaking service. And with your understanding of C-sharp objects and classes, your friend thought that you could build a pretty well-organized system of dating profiles. So our first step is going to be to build a profile class, and it should store the following information. A user's name, age, city, country, pronoun, and hobbies. We want our user to be able to interact with their profiles in this way. They should be able to create a new profile with some information. They should be able to add hobbies and they should also be able to view their profile. So let's get started with the fields of a classy profile. We'll make sure that we're in the profile.cs file, and we'll set up the skeleton of the profile class. Now we can do that with the class keyword, and then we'll name our class profile. Step one is complete. And if you need help with any of these steps, always be sure to pop open the hints to get helpful information how you can accomplish the task that we're trying to achieve. Okay, on to step two. We're gonna add the following fields to profile, a variable of type string name, type int age, type string city, type string country, type string pronouns, and then finally, an array of strings, hobbies, perfect. Now these could have been implemented as properties, which are used to validate values and control external access, but we're gonna see later in this project how we can accomplish those same abilities using methods. Okay, let's mark step two as complete, and we'll move on to step three. We wanna tab over to program.cs, and in our main method, we're gonna instantiate a new profile object named Sam, and we do this with the new keyword, profile, and we want to give Sam a name. So we'll type in Sam and then the name field, and we'll set this equal to a value of Sam Dracula. Okay, let's go ahead and save our code. And now we'll go ahead and run our code by typing in .NET run, and we get an error, but that's okay. We'll address this in step four. We see that we have a message Profile name is inaccessible due to its protection level. And if we remember from our interactive lessons, all members of a class, including name, are automatically set to private. And so we want to make this more clear for ourselves and others by explicitly adding private to all of our fields. All right, perfect. Let's mark step four as complete, and we'll move on to step five. Users should be able to add their profile information in a constructor. So back to our profile.cs file. Underneath our fields, we'll declare a constructor profile. We'll use the keyword public profile, and then we'll add in string name, int age, string city, string country, and string pronouns. And we want to give pronouns a default value of they, them, in case the user doesn't provide this information. And while we're defining the constructor in profile.cs and setting the fields to the values passed in, we want to make sure to set hobbies to an empty array of strings. And we'll need to remember to use the this keyword to differentiate parameters from instance fields. So we'll set this dot name equal to name, this dot age equal to age, this dot city equal to city, this dot country equal to country, this dot pronouns equal to pronouns, and then finally as we said, this dot hobbies will be set to an empty array of strings. We can accomplish this with new string, we'll pass in zero. 
Okay, be sure to mark step five as complete, and we'll move on to step six. It's time to test out our code. So let's go back to program.cs. And if you still have this line where we tried to set the field name to Sam Dracula, go ahead and remove that. And we're going to pass in the following information to our constructor, the name of Sam Dracula, an age of 30, a city of New York, a country of USA, and pronouns he, him. Okay, go ahead and save your code. And let's go ahead and run it. And if you don't see any output in your terminal, that's okay. We'll accomplish that in a further step. The main thing to notice is that we no longer have our error as we had before when we tried to define the value of the field name to Sam Dracula. Okay, let's mark step six as complete and we'll move on to step seven. Remember, we have a few goals for our user. We want them to be able to add information to their profile, to set hobbies for their profile, and also to view their profile. So let's work on creating a method called ViewProfile. So we'll go to profile.cs, and underneath our constructor, we'll create our method ViewProfile. This is going to be public. It's going to return a type of string. We'll name our method ViewProfile, and it will not take any parameters. We want our ViewProfile method to return a string containing all of the profile's information. Now if we scroll down to our hint, we get some suggestions for how we might want to do this. It looks like we'll use string interpolation, and we'll use text for what our first variable is. So in this case, we might use the text name, then a colon, and then with string interpolation, we'll pass in name within these curly braces to get the value of name. And then we'll use new line character. So on a new line, we'll provide the text for another variable such as age, a colon, and then within curly braces with string interpolation, we'll get the value for the variable age, and so on. You can choose other ways to format this to fit your taste, but that's the approach we'll take. So I'm going to create a variable of type string, because that's going to be what we're returning, bio, and I'm going to set this equal to using string interpolation, and then I'll write out the text for our first variable, name, then the colon, and then we want the value for name. And then following that, I'll use the new line symbol. And I'm going to go ahead and copy this just so I can do a paste because we'll be using that multiple times. Following name on a new line, we'll have the text age, colon, and the value for age. On another new line, we'll have city, colon, and the value for city, followed by a new line in which we have the text country colon, the value for country, followed by pronouns, colon, and the value provided for pronouns. All right, perfect. Now we'll go ahead and return bio. So this means that when the view profile method is called on our SAM object, our string will be populated with the values that the user has provided for name, age, city, country, and pronouns. And then we'll return that string. OK, let's mark step 7 as complete and move on to step 8. We're going to go to our main method in our program.cs file, and we're going to test out the new method we created on our SAM object. So we want to print this to the console. We can do that with console.writeline. And we'll pass in sam.viewprofile. OK, let's go ahead and save our code. And let's go ahead and run our code. All right, just what we would expect. Our string is printed out to the screen and formatted as we would hope. OK, let's mark step 8 as complete, and we'll move on to step 9. And if you remember, one of our tasks is that users can provide hobbies to be added to their profile. So we're going to accomplish this with a method called setHobbies. So underneath your view profile method that you created, let's go ahead and create another method. This is going to be public. It isn't going to return a value, so we use the void keyword. Then we'll name our method set hobbies. And this one will take a parameter. It's going to be an array filled with string types named hobbies.
and we're simply going to set this dot hobbies equal to the hobbies argument passed in. All right, let's mark step nine as complete. And we'll move on to step 10. Now we're going to modify our view profile method. So above where we return the bio, we want to make sure that we've added Sam's hobbies to the string. We'll take advantage of loops to loop through our hobbies array and add those hobbies one by one to our string using string concatenation. So the first thing we'll do is we'll take our value for bio, which currently, as we can see in the output, was the text name and its value, the text age and its value, and so on. And we're going to want a new line that has the text hobbies and a colon. And then on a new line, we'll use a dash and a hobby. Then on another new line, we'll have another dash and a following hobby. And then another line in which we have a dash and then a following hobby as we loop through our hobbies array. So we'll set bio equal to its current value plus the text hobbies. And so we want this to be on a new line. So we'll use the new line symbol, hobbies, colon, and then we want the hobbies provided to follow on new lines. So we'll use another new line symbol. Great. Now we want to loop through our hobbies array. We can loop through our array in, in a number of different ways. We'll go ahead and use the for each loop in our situation. Now as we loop through our hobbies array, each item will be of type string, hobby, in hobbies. And we simply want to take the value for bio and use string concatenation. And because we want the value for hobby, we're going to concatenate with string interpolation, the text of a dash, a space, and then the value for hobby that we're currently looping through in our hobbies array. And we want each hobby to be on a new line. So we'll make sure to use the new line symbol. Perfect. OK, let's mark step 10 as complete. And we'll move on to step 11. Before we tell our friend that our work is all done, we want to make sure to test out our work. So above where we print Sam's profile, let's go ahead and add some hobbies. So on our Sam object, we'll call the set hobbies method. And if you need any help figuring out how to pass in an argument of an array of strings, we can see how to do this in our hint. We use a new keyword, then our array of strings, and opening, closing, curly braces. And we'll pass in Sam's hobbies, all separated by a comma. OK, let's go ahead and save our code. And before we run our code, on our Sam object, we're calling the set hobbies method. We're passing in an array of strings. And then in our profile.cs, this is calling our set hobbies method, this dot hobbies equal to that array of strings that we just passed in. So once we've saved our code, let's go ahead and run our code with .NET run. And we get the results that we would expect. We get hobbies on a new line. And then following that on each new line, we have a hobby that we provided. Perfect. OK, let's mark step 11 as complete and move on to step 12. In step 12, we have some tweaks that you might want to provide to make your project more robust or to put guardrails on who can use your application. So we have a few suggestions for what can make your profile even better. You'll notice that if you call view profile before a user sets hobbies, you're going to get some unexpected results. So you might want to think of some ways to fix a class that you can call view profile without adding hobbies. You also might think of a situation in which people under the age of 18 shouldn't use your program. You might want to think of what fields or field you would convert into private properties and add validation. Or you might deal with a situation in which a user creates a profile with just their name and age. You might feel that that's all the information that a user needs to provide and that other parameters can simply be optional. You can check out the hint for suggestions of how you might accomplish these steps to make your project more robust. Let's work on a couple of these together. I'm going to clear out the terminal. You'll notice that if a user doesn't provide the pronouns he and him, then if we save our code and run our code, everything works just fine. This is because we have a default value for they, them. We can see this in our profile.cs file, that in our constructor, we have a default value for pronouns. 
However, if we were to remove country and New York from our code and we save it, when we run our code, you'll notice that we get an error. It says on line 9 that there's no argument given that corresponds to the required formal parameter city. So our code breaks at this point before we can even get to country. So let's go ahead and make city and country default values. If the user hasn't provided them, we'll simply set their value to the string na. Now let's save our code. And with the values for city and country missing, let's go ahead and see if our code still runs. It does. Instead of our code breaking, we now have the values of NA for both city and country. Now let's deal with the situation of what happens if hobbies aren't provided. What we can do is look at our code where we're printing relevant information about hobbies, such as adding this text hobbies, or expecting data for our array hobbies. We can check if this.hobbies.length is greater than zero, because if no values have been provided, then the length will be zero. If this is true, if any hobbies have been provided, then we'll simply take this code and put it within this code block. So we're only going to print this text hobbies and attempt to loop through a hobbies array if this.hobbies.length is greater than zero. So now that we've commented out calling the set hobbies method and passing in an array of strings, if we run our code, our program should run just fine as we don't try to print out the text hobbies or loop through the hobbies array and add those values to our string. All right, great job on this project. You've finished a lot of content and some of the most important concepts in C Sharp. When someone asks you, how do I make a custom data type in C Sharp? You can talk all about it. This is Rob with Codecademy. Happy coding.